Hello everybody, the 6 PDS here, just uh, going to do a quick demonstration of my 4 MHz offset attenuator. What I have is a beacon, far end of the house, as far away as I can get it. And I've set the uh, receive frequency at 146.56. You can see that the um, S meter is showing full bar. And if I try and point the antenna in any general direction, it really is too close and I'm getting full bar across the board. This is good for when I'm a block away or more, or, you know, some distance from the beacon, but as I get close I need to be able to reduce that signal level. And the way I'm doing it is I've got this uh, offset attenuator, this kit that I bought and I put it inside this housing, but the kit was $15, bought it on the web, and uh, what I can do is set my radio now to uh, 4 megahertz off the desired frequency 142565 and then I turn on my turn on my uh, offset attenuator you can see that I'm receiving the signal but now I have the ability to turn the level down so I've turned the level down on my attenuator until the signal cuts out now I can actually use it to effectively point And I have either the squelch, or I can show on the on the S meter. I can adjust the signal level, basically attenuate it down, and then with it attenuated, I can look at that S meter for the peak signal, and that'll give me a really good indication of. The direction within a range as far as the Yagi uh, capabilities are concerned. So what I'm going to do is move to the next uh, antenna, the, the um, fox hunting antenna that are built for the uh, device and that's the TDOA device. Forum entry, I have pictures there as well, is the uh, TDOA. Now this is just built from a um, a web article and actually I went back to look for the web article that I'd followed and I found a, a number of other ones, ones that were close but not quite the same. So certainly are a lot of different options there, but I think this one was a really simple one to build. And um, the article itself, just so that you can see it, it was actually a PDF. It's fairly old, I think. And it used a, um, what I'll call a bow tie antenna. I thought, well, I'm familiar with uh, dipoles and I'm thinking if we're doing a two meter dipole or two meter uh, fox hunt, I should have a two meter dipole. So I built that, but I'll show you that in a second. The um, schematic is right here. I can dig into it a little bit more, but it's really, really simple. Um, the, the center here, I've got a 555 timer. So all that's doing is just issuing a, 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 a waveform, a square wave, at a frequency that's in the audio range, I think it's around 600 hertz or maybe a little higher, don't know. But what it does is it just feeds that signal into the base of two diodes opposite two antennas. So it's effectively switching quickly back and forth between those two antennas. That's all it's doing, it's just that simple. The bill of materials was actually listed below here. And I went through and bought everything here except one thing from, uh, b &E Electronics, and I had a little trouble with a specific item, but I didn't find it too hard to, uh, to get all the parts locally. And I'm thinking if people wanted to get this, I could go through and, and redo the, the uh, bill of materials so that we actually had a pick list. You could just go there and say, here, here's what I want, and you'd get the rest of it. Um, this took me a little longer to build than the, uh, the other one, of course. But if I go back to my article, I'm going to show you the... Uh, the video again. Hello everybody, V6PDS, Pat here, just demoing my uh, TDOA, time difference of arrival antenna detector that I built. So the circuits inside here, uh, basically two antennas that are equivalent, they're inputs to this and then the output is to my radio. And with the radio tuned to the beacon, what I'll do is first let you hear the beacon by itself, there it is. So as strange as that is, that's a beacon. Beacons once every minute for 10-15 seconds. So 
now what I'll do is if I turn on the detector, and I'll show you what happens. I normally will hold this like this, where I'm looking at the radio. And I'm going to hold it off center so that you guys can see it. Turn it on. And when I'm pointing it directly at the beacon, it basically nulls out. And then it's off axis. You hear the audible side tone. What I found is that it's slight difference. It points a little to the right, so it's a matter of understanding the antennas, the length of the cables and uh, reflections in the area and that sort of thing. Also get very close to the uh, beacon, and it's so extremely useful to Next, uh, Dana, do you want to uh, talk about yours? Because it's. Uh, similar to Patrick's. Yeah, very similar. The uh, same same uh, operation there. I actually have the board here that's not functional at the moment, but um, the, the real difference is that the, the, the oscillator in here, it's just a, it's, it's a monostable um, oscillator chip. Um, I can get you the number if you like, but uh, in, instead of a triple five timer. But the idea is the same thing in that it generates a square wave and uh, by applying voltage across a couple of diodes is is how antenna switching is achieved and and so it's really whatever frequency you're switching those antennas um the, i mean the, the the reason the thing does not give you any extra modulation when it's um sort of square onto the to the transmitter is that it's effectively swapping from one antenna to an equivalent antenna uh, on the other side so when you switch from an antenna to the same antenna it doesn't do anything to your signal the um yeah my, my observation the first observation i had was was how directional the thing works at very very close range and, and so with some of the other direction finding stuff you'll you'll find that when you're looking for signal strength um things at close range just tend to really cause headaches whereas that this kind of approach um works really well for it with just the two antennas um the direction there is actually a line of action it's it's not it's not um you know for, for the video demonstration you want to see that okay the transmitter's over there and then here we're, we're sort of pointing at it um but actually when you can't find that transmitter it could be forwards or it could be backwards and if um you know pat, pat identified you know putting your body in the way if that's not enough to cause a difference in the signal um you actually don't have a distinction of which direction that is and so you, you may actually have um and for any direction finding um when you're not fighting with a bunch of reflections you may actually find it beneficial to go orthogonal to the direction you think that it is um right so don't, don't go towards or away from you go sideways um as far as you can um, and in the, the case of that particular fox, it is transmitting sporadically. It will transmit for a period of time, and it does not transmit for a period of time. And so you try to hoof it orthogonal to the direction um, until it turns back on again. And you might actually be able to then uh, have, have sort of two points of reference with, with angles that hopefully converge in one direction versus the other one. 
um, if you have reflections and whatnot, maybe you just want to get far away and, and, and to see if that'll help you get into it more. Um, I did observe close to mine is, is that, uh, that switching, um, and I think but mine's maybe one kilohertz, I think, uh, is what uh, mine is switching at. And it was actually, I think that the switching of the antennas was enough to bump. I, I, I I'd, uh, made a couple of wire dipoles that were resonant at the event uh, for the, the, the Fox frequency. And I think that actually that, that switching with the square wave was actually enough that it was bumping those dipoles and it was actually generating a little bit of RF um, that, that was actually at the switching frequency of the thing. And that, that actually might be... Um, something you'd see with the uh, the sort of um, that, that four megahertz uh, uh, attenuator as well in that uh, you because you have a local oscillator and you've got it connected to uh, elements that are resonant at RF frequencies is that you might actually put a little bit out it won't be very much at all um, probably 10 feet away from you. you wouldn't get anything but but right beside there um, I had a handheld on a UHF frequency that was that was picking things up but it's a fox on that thing no it's not not on that frequency but it sounded like it was and that was uh, so some some mixing was happening for from some of that nonlinearity. Uh, okay, um, I think I might go next because uh, I took a little bit of a different approach to uh, time direction of arrival. Um, I found a video on the YouTube that uh, described the building of a passive time direction of arrival rather than the active that uh, electronics that Dana and, uh, and Patrick used. And uh, mine basically, is uh, two sets of two dipoles on each side, a quarter of a wave apart. And they're uh, connected with a, a half wave and a quarter wave. So the idea is when I'm pointed at the fox, the signals that this antenna catches arrive at the connection point delayed by a quarter wave of transmission through the wire, match up with this other quarter wave. And uh, if this side is at the peak of the wave, this side will be at the bottom of the wave. And when you add the plus and minus together, you get zero. And so you drop out when you're pointing directly at the, uh, at the beacon. And I've got a little bit of a video to show it, but I've got so much interference around my uh, uh, machine with the computer and et cetera, it doesn't turn out working as well as I would like it to, but I'm going to try sharing my screen and play that video. I like the 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 logic helped me to understand uh, how uh, waves worked and etc. I maybe don't have as much electronics awareness as uh, Dana and Patrick. So this was a simple method for me. Hello, this is VA6 Julie Whiskey Lima trying to demonstrate my uh, time distance of arrival passive antenna. I have a uh, half wave electrically connection on this side, a quarter wave on this side, and they go together to feed to my radio. And when I point the antenna with the arrow up here towards the beacon, we should uh, hear a reduction in the sound tones. I, step, I have to step back from the computer because there it is. the tone cuts out. And it comes back on and my S meter goes up, but if I stand close enough to the computer to show the screen of the radio on the computer, it uh, will not give me the right readings. There we shut off 
and we have sound back. And the S meter is moving up to three here. And it gets fuzzy and disappears. So I put that together with some uh, 14 gauge uh, dipoles uh, just clamped into the wood uh, with bolts and uh, soldered together. I somehow I, I was having difficulties. Uh, Saturday, when I was testing it in the basement, 10 or 15 feet away from the Fox, uh, would knock the signal out completely. Just it would be gone. But I couldn't get the videoing to work right. So came back on Sunday to video and something had changed and it would not uh, drop out at all when I was pointing at the Fox. So I said, what's going on? I had put the three wires that were going together. I had put them two from one direction and one from the other. And it was kind of an ugly connection. The center of the uh, RG316 was, one of them was pretty weak. So I thought, I want to replace that. So I rewired it and uh, put it together and was able to get some reduction but not as much to drop out to nothing. So I still have a puzzle of what kinds of problems are going on. I'm thinking I want to put a couple pieces of Lexan on each side to mount the dipoles on so that I reduce electrical conductivity. And when I do that, I want to make one side so I can slide it in or out to tune the frequency to the wavelength more effectively. And I'm starting, I'm wondering if an oscilloscope would help me to figure out that distance that I need to do for, uh, by experimentation and watching what happens uh, to the oscilloscope. Um, on Sunday I, or Monday, I tried to get my wife to videotape with the phone. And when I got near enough to her holding the phone to record, there was too many people there. And the uh, reflection was not, uh, or was impacting the accuracy of the signals. So I had to back away and then it would uh, would work, but I couldn't show the actual S meter uh, change on the phone. So I still have some more uh, experimentation to do uh, and we'll uh, figure it out hopefully and uh, see if I can get some improvement. Any questions? I've got one. It's Fred V6 Fox Victor Delta. Yes, Fred. If when you're pointed directly at it and you get a null, then if you're pointed 180 degrees away, the two antennas should be going in sync and you should get a strong signal then. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And that is true. And that was explained in the uh, video that I uh, used to uh, get the idea to build it. Uh, and uh, that the address for that video is in that same uh, forum that Patrick uh, was showing us earlier. I've got that uh, uh, link to that video that gave the instructions there. But you're absolutely correct. Well, it's bound to happen sooner or later. <laughs> you um, and then that that would be because you've got them a quarter wavelength apart. Uh, you could actually build that with a half a wavelength between them, and it would actually should be symmetric um, as far as having a null on both ends. But yeah, if, if you look at the pattern of that antenna with the quarter wavelength between them, uh, yeah, what you'll see is is one very sharp null in one direction, and and your your sort of cartoid pattern there would would, would you have pretty good gain. Um, everywhere else and, and should have maximum gain, uh, but like you say, Fred, uh, just, just the other direction. 
uh, on it. And and yeah, uh, so unlike uh, with uh, with the uh, the active one that Pat was doing there, uh, where you get a line of action there, uh, Wilson's is definitely that is a direction, um, right? So, so you have a sort of forward direction uh, towards the reflection that you're chasing, um, uh, or or maybe actually the transmitter. So that could be useful if you're really far away and it's a really weak signal. You use the uh, additive ends to get close and then switch to the subtractive end. Yeah, or the, the null end to, to null out some noise that you don't want to hear. I, I had tried a 70 centimeter uh, unit and took it out in the park behind the house here and tried it. And I was getting so much reflection off the chain link fence that uh, it was really difficult to identify the, the direction and confirm it. The um, uh, so Wilson, as far as the variable length one, that that that's interesting, and you might want to try working it out in um, in the math first to see what happens, because what will end up happening is you're changing the physical distance between the elements, um, but you're probably keeping the phasing line the same distance, and so so you, there there should be an optimal solution that'll kind of get you there, but your phasing line is is not the core the extra quarter wavelength anymore um, when you go to a different frequency, so so that well, that'd be um, I was trying, my idea was to try to get, if my measurements are not exactly accurate and uh, I'm trying to measure to the center of the bolts or whatever, but the uh, copper is beside it and where a connect to the copper uh, is in a different place. Uh, I was thinking that the sliding, it would give me a chance to try to find a sweet spot in and, that and yeah, distance. That's that should work. Uh, that 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 should do it. Um, and um, you might not even need an oscilloscope. You could, um, if if you have a sort of rigid enough test set up and you have a known uh, correct direction, you could adjust it until it's not open in the squelch on your radio anymore. If it kills it perfectly, or or till till the signal actually drops off. I was so excited on Saturday when uh, it would not open the squelch on the radio when I was pointing, and uh, I think Rob was on the net. Uh, on on RYC and I uh, was exclaiming to him my uh, my excitement and then uh, down the tubes on Sunday when I went back and it didn't work. Uh, Nero, you want to give it a go? So in terms of uh, choosing the antenna that uh, I uh, selected to build for the uh, fox hunt, I went for simplicity. Uh, because I don't, uh, I'm, I'm new to everything and I wasn't confident in my soldering skills. So I went for simplicity and I uh, browsed YouTube and I tripped over a video that uh, talked about making a mag loop antenna. And the beauty of that was that it allows you to find nulls and we want to find the beacon. But what's also important is to find the nulls where you don't get the signal because that helps you narrow it down. So I found an article or I found the video and uh, it was just a bunch of screenshots and it referenced an article. So let me see if I can uh, bring those up right now. And that was, um, okay. So this is the article that was referenced in the, uh, in the video. And it talks about building um, this uh, magnetic loop antenna. It was very simple, uh, not quite household items, but very simple to make. Um, and you uh, uh, use it, as I said, to help find nulls in the, in the transmitter signal. So one of the things about it is it's essentially a capacitor and you have to tune it. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it here. So this is, this is the antenna I built. Um, it's really rustic here on the soldering because I was, I was learning lots, but if I can just point down the barrel here, so I think you can see there's the, uh, the coax. I stripped away the out outer insulation and that's just the polyethylene she shield in there. And what I did to tune it was hooked it up to the VNA and then just using my fingernail, just slid this uh, core along until I got uh, a reasonable uh, response. You see there's a line on there and that's where I marked my, uh, my ideal point. 
So it's designed uh, as a listening antenna. Um, the SWR at uh, for two meters was ridiculous. It was somewhere between eight and twelve. So it's useless as a as a transmitting antenna, but it's really good for for receiving, which is what you're trying to do on a fox hunt. So that was my uh, that was my reason for choosing this. I didn't think uh, I would be able to build the attenu attenuator. So I uh, I chose this project. One of the other things about this um, antenna is it allows you to employ something called body fade, and uh, I didn't know what that was, but what it is is you block the signal from the transmitter with your body. So you hold the antenna against you and you turn around and where you get a null, then you're blocking the signal. So the signal must be behind you. So let's see what, uh, how this uh, turned out. Sorry, I'm just gonna pull up my, um... okay, so next one, please. So um, as I said, I, I just chose this article for no other reason except, uh, or this project, just because it was the simplest for me to do um, and to limit the amount of building that I'd have to do. Um, so I didn't feel uh, comfortable enough to build an attenuator, probably running out of time as well. Uh, so that's why I chose this one. Um, I can provide the links later. It's also in uh, the April 2021 issue of Keep. So that's uh, the apparatus. That's uh, what... Uh, uh, it consists of, I did have a tape measure at Yagi, the first uh, antenna I used, which was great for sweeping the area of the park and that helped me identify sort of what quadrant or what general area that uh, I might find the transmitter in. But as you get closer, the problem is I didn't have any way to attenuate the signal. So there's no way for me to know how close I am or whereabouts it would be. So that's where the mag loop came in handy. Uh, next slide, please. So as, um, as Dana mentioned, you're, you're essentially triangulating. You, you want to find the signal, but you also, it's very helpful to find nulls or very helpful to find out where you don't have the signal because then that tells you where not to look, but it, it, it helps you to, to narrow it down. Um, so the, uh, the body fade technique was very helpful as I got closer to it. And, and um, once I narrowed down that, you know, what quadrant of the park I was in with the uh, handheld tape measure or the Yagi antenna, then I used the mag loop to try to find out where I should further refine my, my, my search or confine my search. So um, one thing that also helped was to detune the, uh, the radio or, or tune it to a frequency off the transmitter frequency. And what that does also is at some point, if you keep dropping the frequency, then you'll lose the signal. But you you want to try to try to find out where the signal is 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 weakening, I guess, and um, that also helps to that also helps to uh, find where it is. I learned something today. I didn't know that. I don't know if you could play that little uh, clip there, but I did not know that my bow thing it normally displays three digits, but I also discovered today that it will show a very tiny little fourth digit. I was going in 2.5 uh, uh, kilohertz set uh, steps, and I just noticed that little extra digit at the end there. It's so tiny, it's ridiculous. I don't know where, how I missed it, but I guess it's just, it's so small. It's just a little fun thing. So, with the uh, with the mag loop, as I said, we, I use the Yagi to sort of find out what quadrant of, of the park the transmitter was in. And once I I was certain that I was in the right area, then I used the mag loop. And what I found is that the the signal is null off to the side, so off on the loop. If it's perpendicular to the face of the antenna, then that's the strongest signal. So perpendicular here but off to the sides, then I would get a null signal. So I would find out where those nulls were. And then along that line, along the perpendicular line would be the transmitter location, either forward or back. And that's when I use the body fade, hold the antenna against me and turn around in a circle until I lost the signal. And then I knew that it was behind me. It looks funny. There are lots of questions that uh, from passersby. Okay, so the next slide, please, Warren. Okay. 
so here I'm, I'm demonstrating it um, outside and uh, as, as, the, uh, as the signal fades and that tells me, as I said, where the nulls are. So what, I'll see, what we'll see here is that as I turn the antenna, then the signal disappears and, and is reacquired. So if, if you could just play it, please, Warren. <laughs> so I don't know if that's just a, a, a bit of lag, but when, when the video first started out, I was actually facing the transmitter, or had the antenna facing the loop facing the, uh, the transmitter, and as I rotated it, the signal dropped out when I was perpendicular to, or when the loop was perpendicular to it. And uh, by holding it against me and turning myself in a circle, then that would tell me where the signal was, was coming from. So of course, I mean, I mean I'm right next to the transmitter. So it, uh, uh, it, I can easily find it even without an antenna. I think uh, at the last uh, fox hunt, I had a paper clip in the uh, antenna uh, connection on the radio and, and that was able to work even uh, just maybe, you know, uh, from a short distance. Um, so that's uh, uh, just showing that, you know, when you're that close, it just doesn't matter. And I think this is just a short clip here. <laughs> So it's it's not attenuating, but I'm I'm uh, um, I guess moderating the direction or moderating the radio a little bit to to uh, try to uh, change the signal strength or, or or the reception of the signal. So um, taking the easy way out without or the minimal amount of build and uh, still try to make it a successful RDF. So it was um, it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about. Uh, fox hunting and, and uh, just doing builds in general. And uh, I uh, found it to be surprisingly effective in the field. As I said, the first thing is you've got to narrow down the quadrant of the park that, uh, that you're in and the handheld or the tape measure Yagi was really good for that. But that just means that you're juggling a lot of things and if it's cold out, gloves on, gloves off. But uh, it was uh, surprisingly successful. Victor Echo 6, Whiskey Golf November, Edmonton. We, we do a fox hunt every month here in Edmonton. Uh, we've actually started a little fox hunt league. Uh, you can actually go to a website and take a look at it. We use a wide variety of antennas. Uh, what we're starting to teach basically is body block. Uh, I think the young lady there called it the body fade. And this is actually the device that we give to our beginners. It's a 50 ohm resistor soldered across a BNC connector and then we put a cap on it and the body blocking print DLTs. Um, the reason for the, the 5 watt 50 ohm resistor is if you put it on a radio and you accidentally key up versus a paper clip or something it will take a short hit. It's not designed to transmit through but they're convenient, they're easy to make are relatively inexpensive and we actually make them and give them out to our Edmonton fox hunters and I just thought that might be one that might be of interest to to somebody. MVD is, a, is also a member of our organization and we've actually been on out, out on searches and training exercises together. Actually what we're using a lot is uh, is this setup. This is the four, four meg offset with a, with a loop. And we've had very good success with this. And actually, we have one of our fox hunters that can actually take this setup and attenuate a 50 watt vehicle transmitter and literally walk up beside the antenna and attenuate it down so he can identify the fox. 
And, and again, it's that same exact kit that you showed earlier, except we built it in a little project box so we could attach it right to, the, to a radio. It also attached it to our tape measure antenna. It's got a belt clip on the back to fit out a metal bracket. But I could show how the radio setup part. So uh, for the old timers, that is an audio cassettes case that I happen to have lying around. So I cut slots in it. And so the antenna is connected here and with Bill Neal and the Northern Alberta Radio Club built all kinds of tape measure antennas. It's a 65 dB step attenuator. And right now I have, it's a scanner, but there's a clip in the back and I could put on a, a Yesu or an air band. And I had a bunch of panel mount BNC connectors. So I shoved them in here so that that nice little dummy load and antennas, I could just clip them in there and have them handy. So that's the setup I've been using lately. And I attached handles so you can hold on to it. That's all she wrote. And you hook that up to an antenna of some type? Yeah, I've usually been using uh, tape measure antennas that I built two of them, one for the ham Fox on frequency and one for the aircraft ELT, which being a lower frequency down at 121 megahertz. It's a much bigger Yagi and much more awkward to handle. Although both of them I built out of uh, plastic PVC tubing with the help of NARC. And I made it in two pieces that joins together so that it collapses down and is a lot more transportable. 